So let's get started uh, separating the scene into its various layers. Uh, if we look at the different scene elements, uh, you'll see that I have three, uh, three lights, a spotlight which is casting the shadow, and then I have two supplemental uh, directional lights. I have a plane uh, that, that acts as a background and that catches the shadow, and then I have a, um, I have a sphere um, that has a red fong material on it. So the first uh, layer that I want to create is the um, is this plain background here. Uh, going over to the channel box and into the layer editor, you'll see that our layer editor is divided into three tabs. I want the center tab, which is the render, um, which is the render layer tab. Uh, the first layer, which is the default layer, is called the master, and that's going to give me my beauty shot, which is going to contain all of the elements uh, rendered together. Uh, so, in order to create a, um, a second layer, uh, the easy way to do it is to select the object that you want to put on that layer. In this case, it's the plane. And I'll click on this icon over here that just creates a new layer and assigns the selected object. So, it creates a layer called Layer 1, and it says Normal, which we'll talk about in a minute. And my plane is on that layer. Uh, I need a little bit more on this layer because I need to illuminate it. So, I'm going to select my lights. And I can just uh, you know select all three of them from my my uh, uh, outliner, and then right click on the layer, and from the drop down menu, uh, just add selected objects. Uh, double click on the layer to name it, and I'm just going to call this uh, uh, plain uh, layer. And uh, when this says normal, uh, what I'm going to do is just right click on it, and at the bottom of this um, drop down menu, it says attributes. And in the attributes, um, I can render this as any one of these five different kinds of paths, a beauty, a shadow, specular, color, or diffuse. So I'm going to go ahead and uh, call this a beauty pass, or leave it at, at beauty pass. And when I do a test render, you can see that there's my plane, and there's the nice uh, spotlight that's on there, and I have that secondary light um, um, uh, illuminating the rest, you know, the background. So uh, the next thing that I want to do is uh, create a shadow pass. Um, so what I need to think about is what is it? What are what is contributing uh, to the shadows here? And what's contributing would be the um, the ball because that's casting the shadow, uh, the plane because that's receiving the shadow, and the spotlight which is actually creating the shadow. So those are the three elements that I want. Now the, the, the two directional lights um, serve to illuminate the shadow and keep it from being completely black but as you saw in the uh, in the last video we can adjust that later so I really don't need that. So with my master layer active which will show all of my objects I'll select my spotlight, shift select my sphere and my um, and my plane. Then I'll just click on this other icon again uh, to create another layer. This one I'm going to call uh, shadow. Now there are a few things that I need to do with this shadow layer. Uh, the first is to actually uh, make it render the shadow only. So I'll right click on the layer and incidentally you want to have nothing selected when you do this. If you have something selected it'll bring up the attribute editor for that object. I'm going to deselect everything right click on the shadow layer and bring up the attributes. Here I'm going to turn off the beauty and I'll turn on the shadow uh, attribute. So now when I render this layer, uh, it, it appears as though I have nothing, but the shadow re uh, layer renders as an alpha channel. So up here I can display the alpha channel and you can see that I have my shadow and it's cut out by the sphere. So that's a good start but I don't want it to be cut out by the sphere because if I blur it, uh, it'll, blur, it'll blur this cutout edge as well. So I really want to drop this sphere completely out of my, um, my shadow layer. I can do that pretty easily uh, by selecting this sphere, going into its own attribute editor, and in the render stats section, uh, there are a number of checkboxes here, um, and the one that I want is the primary visibility. That means that this sphere will not render, um, you know, as long as that primary visibility is turned off. Here's something interesting. When I clicked on primary visibility, the name of that attribute turned orange, and that's pretty significant. If I go back to my channel layer um, manager, 
um, you'll see that I had my my shadow layer um, uh, active when I changed that attribute. So this orange just means that the primary visibility for this sphere is off only on that layer. If I go back to my master layer and look at the, um, the attributes, you can see the primary visibility has been left alone. So this is a really important um, aspect of rendering in passes is that you can do layer overrides and change the attributes of certain objects just when you're rendering a particular layer. So let's do a quick uh, render of this now and you can see that now I have no cutout for my sphere but I do have the shadow. I want to back up a little bit and talk a little bit more about um, some additional layer overrides that we can make. Notice that in the layer um, editor I have these three icons one of which is the same icon as the render settings icon up here and this is its own kind of um, render layer override so I'll click on the plain layer uh, render globals and over here under the file name prefix if I right mouse click on the file name prefix there's a little drop down menu that contains the um, create layer override switch. My file name prefix turns orange and then I can name any objects that or any uh, any renders that come off of that layer. So this is my plane layer so I'll just call this plane. Globally my image format is set to TIFF and that's going to be the same for all of my uh, all of my renders. So that's that's um, uh, something that I want to carry through for all of my uh, all of my renders. So on the shadow layer, I'll click on the uh, on the render settings, right click on the file name prefix, create the light layer override, and I'm going to call this shadow. The next render pass that I'd like to make uh, is the sphere all by itself, and I really only want to render the diffuse attribute of the sphere without the specular highlight. So again, uh, just thinking about what it is that contributes to the look of that sphere, I will select all three of my lights uh, and shift and select my sphere uh, by itself. I'll click on this icon here, and that creates another layer uh, that just has the lights and the sphere. Um, when I select this layer, I'll, I'll, um, I'll deselect all my objects, I'll uh, right click on the layer and go into my attributes, and here I'll turn off beauty and I'll turn on uh, diffuse. The diffuse attribute is going to render just the red uh, color of the sphere uh, along with the light absorption around that creates that diffuse attribute, but it's going to leave off the specular highlight. Incidentally, the color pass right here is the same as the diffuse, but it includes the specular highlight. So that's a choice that you have that you can make. In this case, uh, I'll just rename this. I'll call this uh, Sphere Diffuse. I'll do the same thing I did before. Click on the render settings for that layer. I'll right click on the file name prefix and create an override. And I'll call this uh, Sphere Diffuse. Everything else will stay the same, and now when I when I render this layer, um, it looks just like a uh, a Lambert material there. I'm going to quickly uh, run through the specular, which is going to be exactly the same as we've done before. I'll right click on the sphere diffuse this time, though. Select all the objects because I think I want all the objects in here, and I'll create um, this uh, this new layer. On this new layer here, with the objects all um, deselected, I'll right-click, go into the attributes, make this a specular pass. Even though I included all the lights in here, the only light that's really creating any sort of specular highlight uh, is my spotlight. So I can select my directional lights and remove them from the layer. So I'll just uh, uh, remove selected objects from that, that same drop-down menu. Um, Let's do a quick test render to make sure that I've got it. There's my specular highlight right there. And uh, I may want to, um, to change that just a little bit. Um, it looks a little bit dim. I can't really add too much value to it uh, in, the, uh, in the compositor, but I can, I can dim it down in the composite. So um, I'll select my sphere, 
and I'll go into the attribute editor for the sphere. I'll choose my I'll choose my Fong material here, and under my uh, specular color right here, I can right click and create a layer override, and I can turn that specular color all the way up to bright white. So the lesson here is that you can create a layer override for just about any attribute that you want, and it's always the same process. You find the attribute, you open it up on the layer that you want to change it for, you just right mouse click and uh, select um, you know, the create layer override for that. So let's do a quick render here, and now you can see I've got a pretty bright white highlight that I can change the hue of, I can scale it, or I can um, um, I can make it a little bit dimmer in the uh, in the compositor. Going back to my um, my channel box, I'll double click and rename this layer, and I'll call this specular. And I'll click on my render settings. I'll right click, create the layer override on the title, and I'll just call this specular. Now. You may feel inclined to skip the step of naming your layers, and um, it's an important step to to uh, to do. And I'll show you why. Once once I've got these layers set up and I have them named and set the way that I want, notice that on the left here um, there is a little box that has a little green check mark in it. That check mark identifies these layers for rendering and you'll notice that now that I have these additional layers here there's a little X in that same spot for the master layer so automatically now Maya has decided that I want to render these four layers but not my beauty layer as, uh, as my process goes on you know if I want to re-render any one of these layers I can just click on here and put the X in and just render a single layer like the shadow for example when I batch render this, Maya will go ahead, uh, save the file, and uh, batch render it into my images directory. The batch render is finished, and when I open up my images directory here, uh, you'll see that um, I have now uh, five subdirectories. And, you know, in addition to this temp directory, I have one directory for each one of my um, uh, my render layers that I name. So that's why it's important to, to, uh, to, to name these. Uh, imagine just for a minute that instead of a single image we were rendering a thousand frame animation so now each one of these subdirectories would carry um, a thousand frames of that particular pass. So it becomes pretty important to keep this organized like this. When I open up one of these layers you'll see that um, the name here is the name that I gave in the in the render override uh, in the um, in the attribute editor.